Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about my top five tips and tricks for Righteous Fire Chieftain, primarily for uh, league starting and a lot of this kind of also has to do with the campaign. So the first one I want to go ahead and jump right on into is one of the nice things about Chieftain is all you have to do with this ascendancy is stack fire res and later on maximum fire res. Um, so an example of how this looks is when you get this Ascendancy, Sallow Cleansing Water, and Volaco's Storms Embrace. If you look at my max res here, by removing Volaco's Storms Embrace, you can see my Cold and Lightning immediately shoot down. And this is because this node makes it so they actually are essentially being capped at your fire res. So if your max fire res is 90, then you can actually easily achieve 90 Cold and Lightning with Volaco's. And then Sallow Cleansing Water, you look at this, my res went from positive on the cold to it's still positive, but 55%. And the lightning is now negative 46. If I pull or plug that in, it goes all the way to capped and then over capped for like elemental weakness and, you know, for monsters that can actually shred your res. So this is an incredibly powerful, uh, not just for league start, but also because it saves you affixes on your gear. So it makes gearing easier for newer players and for experienced players, it allows you to kind of you can choose your affixes uh, to be a bit more niche, right? Okay, one of the other things on top of that is also being able to resist and swap on your gear. So I'm going to give an example of what that means really fast. Uh, let me go ahead and just kind of, I'm just going to kind of like, um, oh, actually, I just realized this is a fractured piece. Okay, let's go ahead and alk this. Sometimes these can, these can get resistances. Or actually, better yet, I have a, another idea. Let's go to the harvest bench. So we're just going to do like reforge fire and see if we get fire res. Okay. So you see how this has fire res and lightning res? So the bottom one, imagine this did not have fire res and it only had lightning res. You would actually be able to change a modifier that grants uh, lightning res into fire for life force. TLDR, you can also change cold and lightning into fire. Uh, vice versa, you can change maximum resistances on shields. Unless they change that, I could be wrong. So this is a nice tool for being able to like buy gear or maybe you find good gear, but like it has the wrong resistance, you can use harvest and swap it over. So this is a very nice tool. Okay, next up, we've got uh, uniques that I would recommend. So I put a little uh, paint document here of them. These are the main ones you would use in the campaign. I was trying to buy them, but standard buying is just crazy right now since everything is in standard. Ikizuru is basically a ring that gives you a crap ton of sustain, and there's probably like 400 other uniques I could list, but these are the most notable for me. This gives you three life regen per level, um, so it scales with you and is incredibly powerful, while also giving you all attributes, which can help with int and dex requirements. And then, of course, reduced effective curses is just good in general. Um, Pyre Ring, on the flip side, is pure damage. You can see the really high amount of burning damage on it and it's very low level so both of these you could pretty much start when you run rf um so that's what makes these so nice at low level now pyring i think could screw you over at late game when you're trying to explode chain but that's not really you don't do that in the campaign so that doesn't matter next up would be rise of the phoenix it's typically one of my first purchases even though this league we're going to be pivoting into a block based setup when you're not 90 max res rise of the phoenix can help you out a lot and also just the sheer amount of recovery on the shield can help fix a lot of early game problems. Speaking of recovery, that moves us on to Immortal Flesh. Immortal Flesh is solely made for life and life regen, you can see here. Also, the minus 45 physical damage taken from attack hits is actually very nice. Um, so all of these together, this is a fantastic belt. You do have to deal with the minus res on it, but usually you're fine with Chieftain because you stack a bunch of res anyway, right? So these are them. The last one would be Dawnbreaker, but Dawnbreaker is typically a lot more expensive than these on League Start since Dawnbreaker is gated behind Exarch as a drop. And these are all just global can be found basically in the campaign. Okay, we're going to close out of that. Next up would be a way to decide or check your damage. So with Righteous Fire, it's actually totally fine to check your tooltip when you're in the campaign. There are There's an argument to be said for later, but it's not really relevant. Basically, the reason why people tell you typically not to check tooltip is with most builds, you have to factor in attack speed, cast speed, critical strike chance, penetration, lowering res. All of this stuff does not apply to the tooltip correctly. Crit might. Um, with RF, we don't have to worry about that. We just are pretty much scaling damage over time. It always ticks at the same rate, if that makes sense. 
and we don't have the ability to socket in penetration or lower res. Lower res is typically not even relevant for Chieftain at all because of our ascendancy. So there's nothing wrong with looking at a weapon in the campaign, right? Looking at your damage and saying, oh, my RF does 800k. I put on this new weapon and now does 1 million, right? That's an easy way to identify what upgrade is better for you at the time. And honestly, it, it works all throughout the game for quite a while. So all you got to do is look at deals X amount of fire damage per second on RF. And then when you're looking at fire trap, you want to look at the deals fire damage per second. It's important to note that when you're looking at fire traps damage, you also want to make sure your righteous fire is active as it gives you a big spell damage multiplier when comparing damage. The last thing is making sure your life tap is active. So I typically just shield charge in place to get my life tap proc. And that's because if you don't have the life tap buff, you're not actually receiving the damage. Okay, next up, elevate your clear with ignite proliferation mechanics. So ignite proliferation is typically what we go for either on gloves so where it says fire damage over time multiplier, you could have this modifier located right here, which is ignites you inflict spread to other enemies within a radius. The radius part doesn't matter as much. You just want the ignites you spread, ignites you inflict spread to other enemies. So an example of how this looks, if I were to go pop in a toxic sewer map really fast, so I have a map tab here, am I blind? I think that I might be blind, not gonna lie. All right, we'll just go run a Caldera. This is fine. We'll go run. Actually, this one's good. Actually, that's a T12. Yeah, we'll just go run this. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, that looks good. They also disabled Herald of Ash there. So essentially, what happens here is when you kill the pack, you see this. You see these circles. See how the mobs died, revived, and then died again? That's the ignite proliferation mechanic. So, again, see these, uh, see this, like, little circle here? It's kind of hard to tell. I need, like, a bigger pack. I, I don't know if we have yet. big density in this map. Let's see. Okay, here, you can see them. They spawn, and then... See how, like, all these circles here are just killing all the monsters? These are actually close to... These are multi-million damage ignites. And the reason that we need ignite here, ignite chance, is because the ascendancy right here, Hinakura's Death Fury, when we explode on the 5%, 5% is not very common, right? So when it explodes, you want to make sure that the explode is rolling your Ignite Chance. You can do this by just simply getting Ignite Chance on the tree. Um, and then that explode is creating the proliferation. And that proliferation is so strong because like say you're fighting a boss and you get an explode right next to the boss, you missed. But if you have a proliferation, you can just pull the boss two steps down and then it will just disintegrate from the Ignite, right? This is definitely one of the really big things for boosting your clear speed. Also, the more dense your maps are, the thicker your maps are, the more noticeable the Ignite proliferation is going to be. Once you start mapping and you're in like yet like white maps, you might not notice it being very special because there's not enough density yet. Same with this content, there's not enough density yet. But once you have big density, the Ignite proliferation really is the number one thing I'd say you can do to elevate your clear with the build. Okay, next up would be simple scepter crafting tips. Now, scepter crafting is always an issue with Righteous Fire, and it doesn't really have anything to do with Righteous Fire. It's more so that crafting damage over time scepters can be tricky, because there is no such thing as an essence for fire damage or elemental damage. It's spell damage. Our build doesn't work with spell damage. So here it, well, Fire Trap does, but RF doesn't. Here's a nice way to do this. On the tree, we take this node called Spiritual Aid. In my super late game versions, I don't run it. But in the campaign and stuff, and even into early mapping, you're still running this. You can go ahead and buy a singular Deafening Essence of Fear. Probably costs you a couple chaos, but it guarantees an 83 to 94% increased damage roll. This is equivalent to a nine, basically an 80 to 90% fire roll. So if you click this on a scepter, right? You see how my scepter now has 88% minion damage on it? What you can do is you can do this until you get a suffix open. So see now how I had 94% minion damage? With a suffix open, if you do the Betrayal League mechanic and you unveil, you can actually unveil Fire Damage Over Time Multiplier. I now, with two essences and four C, just crafted myself basically a 30% elemental damage with 94 minion, which is equivalent to 94% fire damage with a Damage Over Time Multiplier roll. 
this literally took me under 10 chaos. And this is a starting weapon you can use up until you get a fractured base. So very, very solid. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day but Sundays. Although this league, I will be streaming Sundays specifically for the first week. Um, so you can catch me at twitch.tv slash box. I'll be league starting RF Chieftain. And we're going to be blasting. It's going to be a long stream. So I'm going to catch you guys all later. Thanks everyone so much for watching. And see you guys over on the live stream. Take care, everybody.